my YouTube friends and family. Sorry I haven't posted any updates from my revision weight loss surgery from lap band to duodenal switch. I've been so busy with school. I have four credits left and hope to graduate in August. A quick update though. I'm over seven months out. I've lost 88 pounds so far. 124 from highest. I feel great. My blood pressure is lower, actually low, <laughs> normal, and I have zero sleep apnea. Um, I can fit in chairs now. Looking forward to going to amusement park this summer and hopefully horseback riding. I decided to post this video today uh, because it's uh, a practice for my informative speech that I'm doing in a couple of hours. Um, this is a short speech, so a warning. It's I'm only allowed six to seven minutes, so it has limited information. I plan on doing a persuasive speech in the next couple of weeks for this class, so I'm looking for ideas of persuasive of a persuasive speech that is on this topic of weight loss surgery, but it needs to be relevant for a general audience. So without further further ado, I'll perform my speech for you speech face. Good afternoon everyone. My name's Amy. Chances are you or someone you know is either overweight or obese. I've been overweight and obese for most of my life. I remember being overweight in the fifth grade. I've tried hundreds of diets over the course of my life like low fat, low calorie, low carbohydrates, and I did all of my exercising but nothing seemed to work. I remember in 2007, I was sitting at home watching a commercial on TV and it mentioned a weight loss surgery um, solution called the adjustable gastric banding system. I jumped into this decision without doing any research because my surgeon told me that it was the safest and the most minimally invasive procedure out there. However, after four years of extensive research, I had to find a new surgeon to perform what they call a revision weight loss surgery, where they took the lap band off of my stomach and performed the biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch. So I've had two weight loss surgeries in my life. After hearing my story today, you might become more interested in learning about the types and examples of weight loss surgeries out there. For either you a friend or a family member. Today I'm going to cover one growing way people are fighting back at obesity by adding a surgical tool to help. These tools fall under two categories, restrictive and a combination of malabsorptive and restrictive weight loss surgery. Let's begin by explaining the first type of weight loss surgery. It's called restrictive. Dr. Michael W. Smith from WebMD.com explains, Restrictive surgeries work by physically restricting the size of the stomach and slowing down digestion. A normal stomach can hold about 48 ounces. After the surgery, the stomach can only hold as little as an ounce. But over time, that will stretch and hold more. The smaller the stomach, the less you can eat. The less you can eat, the more weight you lose. The most common example of restrictive weight loss surgeries is the adjustable gastric banding system, or commonly called the lap band. Dr. Andrew Seibert from WebMD.com describes how the surgery is performed. A silicone band is placed around the upper part of the stomach. Now a tube runs from the band to a device under the skin where sterile salt water can be injected to make the band tighter. Now this surgery can be reversed if necessary. Next we're going to look at a second example of restrictive weight loss surgery. This is a newer procedure called the sleeve gastrectomy. In the sleeve gastrectomy, the surgeon removes most of the stomach, including the parts where the hunger hormone is created. Now the new stomach is a narrow sleeve that connects to the intestines. Sometimes this surgery is followed up by a second weight loss surgery to add malabsorption, and that would hopefully create greater weight loss success. 
However, in some cases, the sleeve gastrectomy is the only surgery this patient will need. Now, this surgery is not reversible because the excess stomach is actually removed from the patient's body. So far, I've given two examples of restrictive weight loss surgery. Um, here is a picture of the lap band, the actual lap band that goes on the stomach. Um, there's no cutting or stapling to the organs in the body. And this picture I got from WebMD.com. Next, um, we're going to talk about the second type of weight loss surgery. It's called malabsorptive and restrictive. This procedure uses a combination of malabsorption and restriction. Dr. Michael W. Smith from WebMD.com explains malabsorptive and restrictive surgeries work by changing how the patient takes in food. In addition to restricting the size of the stomach, these surger surgeries physically remove parts of the digestive tract, making it harder for the patient to absorb calories and nutrients. The most common example of malabsorptive and restrictive weight loss surgery is the gastric bypass or Roux Y gastric bypass. In this procedure, the surgeon divides the stomach into two parts. The upper part is a pouch that's stapled off from the lower part. And the upper section of the stomach then, this pouch, is connected to the lower section of the digestive tract, the intestines. This will create a shortcut for the food bypassing most of the stomach and parts of the digestive system. Finally, the last example of malabsorptive and restrictive weight loss surgery is the most risky, most invasive weight loss surgery option out there. The biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch procedure is different from the gastric bypass by bypassing different parts of the digestive tract. It also lets the patient keep the pylorus valve. The pylorus valve is the valve that can train um, controls food drainage into the stomach. Where in the gastric bypass, the pylorus valve is removed. Only the intestinal work of these malabsorptive and restrictive surgeries can be reversed if medically necessary. Here is a picture, a diagram rather, of all four surgeries I've talked about. And I got this off of newsmedical.net. In conclusion, I'd like to share a startling statistic with you. Kelly McParland from NationalPost.com explains, by 2020, a full 75% of Americans will be overweight. The United States remains the world's fattest country. Today, we've gone over reasons why you may, may need to be informed on weight loss surgery options. You should be generally informed on the types and examples of weight loss surgeries for you or, or a loved one. I want to let everyone out there know that there are options if you're struggling with weight loss and diet and exercise just don't seem to work. Today, we've looked at the common examples of weight loss surgeries that fall into two categories, restrictive and a combination of malabsorptive and restrictive. I hope now all of you will have the general knowledge if you or someone close to you is faced with such an important life-changing decision. Thanks for listening today.